Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, uh, welcome. In this session, we are going to examine the monetary policy transmission mechanism. Uh, the main objective is to list and summarize the transmission mechanism through which uh, monetary policy can affect the real economy. The transmission mechanism examines uh, whether one variable affects uh, another by using data to build a model. Uh, that explains the channel through which the variable affects the other. So, here the overall transmission mechanism is look like the change in the money supply affects uh, interest rate, interest rates affect investment spending. Uh, this is what we know uh, overall, uh, this is our general understanding or the uh, about the conventional uh, monetary transmission mechanism. So, in this session uh, we are going more in detail uh, what are the conventional that we will discuss little bit more detail. Uh, then we will also discuss what are the other mechanisms of monetary policy transmission. So, before going further uh, let me define what is monetary policy transmission. So, monetary policy transmission is the process through which changes in monetary policy affect uh, economic activity including aggregate demand, GDP, employment, etc. So, about the monetary policy, uh, by now you are familiar what are the tools central bank use to affect, uh, into in, in to conduct the monetary policy, what are the tools they use and of this we have seen that most central bank, they most central bank they use short term interest rate, uh, Fed fund rate in the US for example, uh, repo rate in India, uh, these are the short term interest rate, uh, these are the policy instrument uh, in the conduct of monetary policy. Uh, then what we are going to look at um, the monetary policy transmission uh, is this the process through which a change in the policy rate for example, Fed fund rate and repo rate is transmitted first to the short term money market rate and then to the entire maturity spectrum of interest rate including long term covering the money and bond market both uh, money market as well as the capital market as well as banks uh, deposit and lending rate. So, these are the initial stages of the transmission and subsequently we are trying to link uh, this to the other uh, important economic variables. So, this in turn impact investment decisions consumptions which would affect aggregate demand and output inflation. So, there are several the way in which monetary policy affects the economy, these are actually mainly through the aggregate demand and the economy. There are uh, different uh, economies have identified various channels through which uh, the monetary policy affects aggregate demand and the economy. So, the first one is uh, the traditional interest rate effects that is one, then the second one is other asset price effects. And finally, the thirdly, the credit view uh, channel. So, let us discuss one by one. Uh, coming to the first one, I think you are familiar with this one. This is called the traditional interest rate mechanism. So, in the case of the traditional interest rate mechanism, the traditional view of the monetary policy transmission mechanism uh, is that uh, a change in the money supply affects uh, interest rate. Suppose, uh, we can look it in any way. Suppose, uh, if the monetary policy uh, strategy is for example, money supply targeting that is the monetary aggregate targeting that is one. Uh, so, anyway, if uh, the central bank targets the money supply and then this will lead to changes in rate of interest, right. If the money supply is increased, then you know that my rate of interest is decreasing, will decrease. That is one uh, starting point. Uh, the other one is uh, changes in short term interest rate that you are well familiar now FFR and uh, repo rate that means uh, directly the 
initial the starting point itself is changes in rate of interest. Suppose uh, reduce uh, decline in the uh, the reduction or cut in the rate of interest and how then you know that this would be affecting the short term interest rate uh, will be affecting the long term uh, the long term interest rate. Uh, long term uh, interest rate uh, this also will get affected because the theories that we covered in the previous sessions uh, clearly show that there is high correlation between short term interest and long term interest right. So, an important feature of the interest rate transmission mechanism is its emphasis on the real interest rate rather than on the nominal interest rates as the rate that affects consumer and business decisions. So, let, let us put it the more schematic way schematically let us put uh, how does it affect. So, in uh, moreover the as we have seen here is that is often the real long term interest rate uh, that is viewed as having major impact on spending. So, here uh, more schematically what we can do that uh, we can explain this process one is interest rate affects investment spending and you know that investment spending is a component of aggregate spending because in the macroeconomic uh, framework the aggregate spending uh, the aggregate demand is equal to consumption aggregate demand investment plus uh, government expenditure in a closed economy. So, here a decline in rate of interest uh, would lead to an increase in uh, investment spending. Let us see these are the schematic presentation so that an easing monetary policy that means an expansionary monetary policy leads to a fall in uh, interest rate this one a fall in uh, real interest rate uh, causing a rise in investment spending then this will lead to an increase in investment spending you know the reason because uh, decline in rate of interest means the cost of borrowing for the firms uh, decrease the cost of production uh, uh, decrease so that means they will increase their investments in capital goods and that capital goods and then that means they will set up new factory buy new machines uh, and then they will be hiring more laborers and that means they are organizing they are expanding the production process. That means as a result you know that uh, aggregate uh, demand uh, will increase because it is also uh, the demand for the aggregate demand uh, this will increase aggregate demand will increase and this will lead to uh, more production and more employment in the economy. So, the same way the way that we di discuss this uh, increase in investment uh, this is the, the investment just now what we discussed was the investment made by firms. So, the same way the investment made by consumers that is to buy houses and consumer durable expenditure is also uh, can be considered as one kind of uh, investment decision. Not only firms if the rate of interest decline and then you can see that uh, the uh, demand for housing and consumer durables that also increase. So, both actually contribute to uh, increase in aggregate demand, aggregate demand uh, increases as a result you can see aggregate demand is increasing. So, the GDP will uh, increase as a result and the subsequently employment also or uh, increases. So, this is one of the uh, channel this is the conventional or uh, the traditional interest rate mechanism uh, which leads to uh, increase in that means a um, uh, easing of money some monetary policy or an expansionary monetary some money monetary policy leads to uh, increase in GDP through this. However, some economists there for example, Ben Benange uh, of former chair of the Fed and Mark Jettler of New York University, they believe that the empirical evidence does not support the strong interest rate effects uh, that operate through the real cost of borrowing. So, as a result indeed these researchers see the empirical failure of uh, traditional interest rate monetary transmission mechanisms as having provided the stimulus for the search for uh, other transmission mechanism of monetary policy. Accordingly, these other transmission mechanisms they are in search for other transmission uh, mechanisms that leads to fall into two basic categories. One is those operating through the price effects other price effects and the other one that we, we are going to discuss shortly that is the credit view the third uh, channel is the credit view. So, about the asset price channel um, transmission uh, just plain 
uh, when the trans monetary policy transmission uh, happen through the asset price channel uh, when changes in monetary policy influence the price of assets the price of assets such as equity real estate that lead to changes in consumption and investment so a change in price of assets can lead to a change in consumption spending due to associated wealth effect uh, for example if interest rates fall people may consider purchasing assets that are non interest bearing such as real estate and equity Uh, further a rise in demand for these assets may result in higher prices a positive wealth effect and thus higher consumption further if equity price rise firm may increase uh, investment spending so let us uh, examine the asset price effect uh, one by one uh, each issue wise the first one the first channel one of the channel that affects the monetary policy through the asset price effects is the exchange rate effects on net exports so especially with the growing internationalization of economies throughout the world and the advent of flexible exchange rate uh, more attention has been paid to how monetary policy affects exchange rates uh, which in turn affect uh, net exports and aggregate demands so this channel that the monetary policy transmission through asset price effects happens uh, occurs when changes in monetary policy impact the interest rate differential between domestic and foreign rates leading to capital flows that is inflow and outflow which in turn affects the exchange rate and hence the relative demand for exports and imports for example the foreign exchange rate channel it also involves the interest rate effects because uh, when the domestic real interest rate fall that means as a result of for example an expansionary monetary policy uh, when the domestic real interest rate fall uh, the domestic currency assets become less attractive relative to assets denominated in foreign currencies you know there will be a capital outflow because when the domestic real interest rate fall so as a result you know when there is a uh, increase in capital outflow as well as decrease in capital inflow so as a result the value because there is more demand for foreign currency thus the value of domestic assets that that means the value of domestic currency assets relative to the foreign currency assets fall and the the domestic depreciation uh, the uh, domestic currency depreciation happens for example uh, if the interest rate real interest rate in india declines as a result of all because of expansionary monetary policy as a result there will be capital outflow as well as decline in uh, capital inflow uh, because now it is worth for the investors to invest in other country instead of in india uh, because the rate of interest is slow there will be capital outflow then as a result the demand for uh, indian currency declines and there will be depreciation of indian currency so when the depreciation happen that means the lower value of domestic currency makes domestic goods cheaper than foreign goods you know that then our uh, goods and services become cheaper uh, then that means thereby causing a rise in net exports that means the demand for our uh, exports increase as compared to the imports so as a result the net exports increase uh, hence aggregate demand increase so the schematic presentation of this one is that uh, a decline in the real rate of interest uh, would lead to depreciation in the exchange rate that means as a result demand for our uh, goods that means the our exports increases and import decreases uh, that means net exports increases net exports increases means there is increase in demand for the aggregate demand that means that means the in net exports increase means there is uh, there is net increase in the aggregate demand when the aggregate demand increases then the gdp uh, increases and as a result the employment also increases. so so overall gdp increases means the level of economic activity uh, increases uh, this is the channel related to the exchange rate effects another effects is through the tobin's q theory james tobin uh, developed this theory which is uh, widely known as uh, tobin's q theory uh, the tobin's q theory explain uh, how monetary policy can affect 
the economy through its effects on valuation of equities. So, before going further, let me explain what is Tobin's Q theory. The Tobin defines Q as the market value of firms divided by the uh, replacement cost of capital. That means Tobin's Q theory. So, we can write Q uh, is equal to uh, what is the market value of a firm? The market value of a firm divided by the replacement cost of a capital. Replacement cost of capital means the actual cost in order to buy the machines and the equipments and the, that means the factory and all the machines and equipments in order to buy how much is actually required. What is the uh, actual cost? We can also call it as the replacement cost. That means if you want to replace uh, all the machines and factories then how much it costs. For example, let us assume that this is 100 billion. Right, let's just assume that this is the replacement cost. It also see that this is the value for buying uh, the machines and equipment if you want to replace. But you know that due to the uh, this market, the stock price of this firm, uh, the equity market value that because of the um, uh, good prospects of this company, the profit is earning and because of that, suppose that though the actual cost of the, the, the assets of this firm is only uh, 100 billion that is the replacement cost. Suppose uh, because of the, uh, the prospects this company is having, the dividend is earning because of the strong economic fundamentals and the market is valuing this company's worth as 200 billion. So, that means the Tobin skew ratio accordingly you know that this one is 2 that is greater than 1. So, what does it mean? So, it means uh, if the Q is high, the market price of firms is high relative to the replacement cost of capital and new plan and equipment capital is cheap relative to the market value of firms. So, it means the firm, the companies can issue uh, stock and get high price for it relative to the cost of facilities and equipment they are buying. So, that means uh, since the market is by valuing them more than the their actual cost, uh, actual investment cost, uh, this firm uh, they can increase the, the investment spending will rise because firms can buy a lot of uh, new investment goods with only a small, small issue, uh, only a small issue of stock. That means you can see that if they increase, suppose if they increase this one to 100, suppose if they make it to uh, 150 billion, if they in, uh, spend and uh, then actually when they issue the stock, uh, actually the additional that you can see that uh, let us make it uh, delta 50 uh, billion they are additionally issuing. Uh, that is the actual purchasing cost of the machine, but the market is going to give them uh, 100 billion. right? So, that means they can raise more capital. Uh, so, this will increase uh, incentivize the firm to raise more capital through IPO. So, conversely, uh, we can also see that if the um, uh, Q is low, that means the firms will not purchase new investment goods because uh, the market value of firms is low uh, relative to the cost of capital. Suppose if the when the Q is less than 1, that means uh, the replay the market valuation of the actual cost is less than the replacement cost of this capital. So, the let us come to the crux of this discussion. What is the main point here? Suppose there is an easing of monetary policy. Uh, suppose as a result, suppose uh, there is an expansionary monetary policy that is easing monetary policy, then you can see that the rate of interest declines. Uh, that means low rate of interest, low interest rates on bonds means uh, that the expected return on this alternative asset uh, that, that is on this alternative to stock falls. Right. When the rate of interest decline, we have seen uh, discussed in the previous sessions that uh, when the rate of interest decline, that means uh, lower real interest on bonds, it means that the expected return on this alternative to stock falls. So, as a result, the stock price will increase. So, when the stock price will increase, that means Tobin's Q ratio will increase. So, that means uh, when the this firm, when the not only for this firm, most firms, what happened that the Tobin's Q ratio will increase. So, now uh, this one will become, for example, 300. Suppose Tobin's Q uh, stock price increase, that the market price, market valuation of the equity increase, then the Tobin's Q ratio is going to be 
3 then obviously the clearly apparently is clear to you that means the firms will increase their investment activities that means the investment will increase uh, that means aggregate demand will increase uh, that means the GDP also increase that means overall economic activity uh, will increase the level of economic activity uh, will increase. So, this is through the Tobin skew ratio this is the schematic presentation schematic uh, pathway of how uh, expansionary monetary policy would lead to uh, increase uh, in economic activity through the Tobin skew ratio. Uh, then comes the wealth uh, effects. Uh, in the wealth effects, an important component of consumers' lifetime resources is their financial wealth, uh, a major component of which is common stocks. So, here when stock price rise, the value of financial wealth increases, thereby increasing the lifetime resources of consumers and consumption should rise. So, as a result you know that the consumption, the present consumption also depends on the lifetime resources available uh, for the consumers. So, when the rate of interest decline then you know that again the schematically the stock price increases and you know that uh, consumers hold a uh, large share of uh, the common stocks. So, as a result when the rate of interest decline when the stock price increase you can see that the consumers uh, wealth increases that means their lifetime resources available with them increases and the consumption increases uh, when consumption means because we have seen that aggregate demand is equal to uh, aggregate demand uh, is equal to uh, C plus uh, I plus government expenditure. So, that means here uh, consumption increases means aggregate demand uh, also increases. So, let us present this one what are the channels that we discussed this is the diagrammatic uh, presentation. Uh, of this one uh, the in their transmission mechanism this one we have already discussed uh, exchange rate also we have discussed uh, Tobin skew ratio we have discussed uh, wealth effects just now uh, we have covered here means monetary policy uh, it affects the stock prices and uh, that means stock price increase uh, financial wealth increase then as a result uh, consumption also increases. So, let us use this framework to explain uh, the further the remaining aspects uh, the remaining uh, monetary transmission mechanism that is under discussion. Here uh, another uh, channel is called uh, credit view, uh, credit view means the transmission through uh, the credit channel happens if monetary policy influences the quantity available for credit. So, this may happen if the willingness of financial institutions to lend uh, changes due to change in monetary policy. There are based on the analysis that demonstrate that banks play a special role in the financial system because they are especially well suited to solve asymmetric information problems in the credit markets. So, we have discussed this issue in details how banks are well trained, uh, well expert, have well expertise, uh, they have expertise in addressing the asymmetric pro information problem. So, let us see which are the through the uh, monetary credit view channel where the monetary policy can affect uh, the aggregate demand. So, the one is the first one is bank lending channel. So, here an expansionary monetary policy it increases the bank reserves you know that actually when uh, an expansionary monetary policy be it um, uh, open market operation or uh, lending that a discount window the bank reserves will be increasing. So, bank reserves increase means as a result bank deposits also increases and it increases bank reserves and bank deposits and it would lead to uh, raises the quantity of bank loans uh, available. So, because many borrowers are dependent on bank loans to finance their activities and increase uh, in loans causes investment spending to rise. So, you know, not only consumers, uh, but also it will have greater impact on uh, expenditure by smaller firms because the smaller firms uh, which are more dependent on bank loans than the larger firms because we have seen in our previous uh, sessions that large firms they can raise their capital uh, through the market through the bond market they can easily borrow from the bond market and they can they can easily raise through IPOs as compared to small firms mainly because of the asymmetric information 
expansion issue. So, you can see that if expansionary monetary policy through this channel uh, not only consumers uh, benefit bank loans, but also the firms also benefit. So, as a result you can see that investment expenditure will increase and aggregate demand also increase. Uh, then the another channel is the balance sheet channel. A balance sheet channel here means the balance sheet channel of the firms is arises because the in the presence of financial friction uh, in the credit markets. So, the debt obligations uh, of businesses may also change due to change in the interest rate. For instance, uh, if the policy rate falls, debt obligation of firms may decrease strengthening their balance sheets. So, that means low rate of interest that means as a result uh, the financial institution may be more willing to lend to businesses and thus increasing investment spending. Uh, the important thing here is that as a result of the balance sheet channel uh, when the rate of interest declines uh, we can see that the stock price is increasing. Uh, firms net worth is also increasing then when you know that that actually and why higher the net worth higher net worth means uh, lenders in effect have uh, more collateral for their loans. So, their potential losses from uh, adverse selection will be lower and similarly that means there will be less adverse selection and there will be less moral hazard because the net worth of the firms increases. So, that means this would incentivize the financial firms, financial institution to lend and as a result investment increases and aggregate demand uh, also increases. Uh, then the other channels is cash flow channels. The cash flow means the difference between firms cash receives and cash expenditure. So, because here an increase in expansionary monetary policy when the rate of interest decreases, uh, firms cash flow increases. You know why? Because the rate of interest decrease means the uh, uh, only the nominal rate of interest is uh, decreasing here. Um, uh, the rate of interest is when the rate of interest decrease. Uh, you can see that the real uh, the payment the debt burden of the firms decreases uh, that means improvement in firms balance sheet uh, because it raises cash flow. So, an increase in the uh, cash flow increases the liquidity of the firm that makes it easier for lenders to know whether the firm will be able to pay its bills. So, here importantly you can say that when the cash flow increases the adverse score for adverse selection and moral hazard decrease, lending increase, investment increase, aggregate demand uh, also increases. So, this we have discussed this for now bank lending channel we covered, balance sheet channel we covered, cash flow channel uh, we covered. Then the remaining two are unanticipated uh, increase in price level and another is uh, household liquidity effects. And coming to unanticipated uh, price level effects uh, the mechanism is through here uh, because in industrialized countries debt payments are contractually fixed in nominal terms and unanticipated rise in price level. Uh, price level lowers the value of firms liabilities in real terms. That means, this would reduce um, uh, the burden of the debt. So, you know that when the decline in rate of interest due to monetary policy, uh, this would increase uh, the price level. Suppose, if it is unanticipated, uh, then you can you know that uh, this will lead to uh, price level increase. That means, uh, the uh, firm's real net worth increase because uh, the firm's uh, price level lowers values value of firm's liabilities in uh, in real term that is decreases the burden of the debt and adverse selection declines, moral hazard decline, lending increase, investment increase, and aggregate demand also increases. And the final channel one, uh, the remaining one is the uh, household liquidity effects. So, the household liquidity effects here clearly if the rate of interest decrease and what we can we already seen that this will lead to decrease in rate of interest leads to increase in stock price that means value of uh, household uh, financial assets that the distress uh, asset value of financial assets increases. It means when consumers have a large amount of financial assets related to their debt because the increase in stock price, their estimate of the probability of financial distress is low and they are willing to purchase more consumer durables or housings etcetera. 
So, as a result you can see that uh, increase in uh, financial assets, uh, financial distress decrease, they will be buying more consumer durables and consumer expenditure and aggregate demand. And actually these uh, credit channels are uh, very important, uh, I have pointed out few, listed out few reasons why credit channels are important for monetary policy transmission. Um, this is an overall because this is the framework I have shown this is mainly from Mishkin test book and other uh, researchers also have shown different channels framework but it is also almost same uh, you can see that these are the framework that they, they have used and another channel uh, especially coming to Indian scenario uh, this is the monetary policy transmission channel that we can outline uh, this I have taken from Dua. Um, so, suppose the change in policy interest rate, suppose the repo rate decline. So, the, you can see that uh, the weighted average call rate declines. So, this will have impact on the banking system or for also uh, on the other money markets. Then this will affect uh, all these uh, variables as well as uh, these uh, various rates as well. Then this will affect consumption, investment and net export, then affect uh, aggregate demand. Uh, then finally, uh, this affects uh, the final goals, the price stability and economic growth. So, in this session, uh, we had covered uh, mainly the monetary policy transmission channels and we had discussed what are the uh, main channels and how it affects uh, different sectors or different important variables of the economy and finally, how it finally affects the key economic variables. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you.